Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon, sir. Very good afternoon. All right. So this is the last session on grammar. <laughs> sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. The last session was tenses, right? Our last session. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you tell me which which tense did we? Uh, what was the last tense that we discussed? Past continuous. Future continuous. Okay. Last one is future continuous. Ah, future continuous tense. That's all. Is this the last one? Future future continuous tense. Ah, this one only. This continuous. All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. So we were going, we were going, looking at one tense after another. We were looking at the form. We were looking at the function. We started our discussion by saying uh, tenses is a very important area in sentence level grammar. In, in high school syllabus also, tense becomes very important. We discussed all those reasons and we said we cannot make sentences without uh, following tense patterns. That's why tense becomes very, very important. So if we can successfully teach tenses to our students, then most of their sentence making errors will not be there. All right. So that's why we spent uh, quite a bit of time. First, we talked about how to teach tenses with a simple present example, right? Functionally, how do we teach? And after that, we went on looking at tense by tense, each tense form as well as function right so last class we have looked at simple tense the first if you go by the basic tenses the basic four tenses which are simple continuous perfect and perfect continuous we have finished two tenses right simple as well as continuous now we will go to the third tense which is perfect tense yes so among perfect tense, the first one is present perfect. Now, as soon as you you're thinking about a perfect tense, what should come into your mind is the verb form, right? V3. We also call it as past participle, right? Past participle form of the verb. And wherever you have a V3 in English, you also have have and has. You don't use a V3 in isolation, right? Always a V3 is accompanied by a have form. Have form means have, has, had, depending on the tense. If it is present, have, has. If it is past, it will be had. That's why you look at the example sentence. They have declared the results. She has finished her work. I have reached home. Has submitted Nina has been to Delhi. Now, if you look at the meaning of these actions, all of them are past, all of them are finished, all of them are over, isn't it? Right? Have declared means the declaration is already over, has finished, have reached, have submitted. You see all these examples, right? So, Yes. So, if you notice, these are actually past actions. But, we are calling it under the label present. Present perfect. And not only that, the verb is also different. If it is past, it should have a past tense. V2 form, no? Why are we using V3? That too with uh, have or has. So, what difference uh, does it have? Right? So, this is why this tense is one of the usually most confused tenses. We are saying that it is present perfect, but we are actually representing a past action. Okay, that's one thing. Another thing is, if this is past action, then what is the difference between this and simple past? So, that's why we need to compare this with simple past. Basically, two things are clear. I mean, one thing is clear. Simple past is also a past action. 
present perfect is also past action this is true no doubt about it but structurally there is a difference in simple past we use v2 in past present perfect we use v3 this is structural difference and meaning wise is there a difference what is the difference right so that is what we should uh, understand here so simple past is one past action which is over no relation to the present okay yesterday i watched a movie yesterday i went to market last week i visited my friend's place last month we went to picnic that's it no influence in the present so present perfect is a past action which is close to the present which is close to the present so that's where recentness comes into the picture recent so present perfect is a past action but it is recent past whereas simple past is just a past action not recent no link to the present okay that's all so this is a minute difference that you need to keep in mind because both are past i have watched a movie is past action i watched a movie is also past action so small minute difference in understanding is when you are treating that as a close to present action past but recent past simple past is just past action present perfect is past but recent past that is why to express this recentness we usually have these adverbs if you notice just you see just how we have used in the third sentence third example just if just comes in middle just finished if it comes at the end you say you use just now i have reached home just don't say just i have reached home just now so just just now both same in meaning and already already and then you see last one recently these are the commonly used adverbs in present perfect commonly used which indicate recentness so we know by these adverbs by these adverbs we know that the tense is in the present perfect okay ravindra babu sir you have a doubt yeah or by mistake you press that uh, hand raise option okay so recently already just just now these are the commonly used words for expressing recentness now from exam point of view i have been telling you already even in simple past also i told you when you are teaching a particular tense identifying the commonly used adverbs and introducing them is also important same thing applies here also right in an examination point of view a student knows that it is uh, uh, you know which verb is he is supposed to fill in based on the adverbs only that's why you it's important that you teach your students these adverbs their meanings and function all right okay so yeah now this present perfect negative in negative sentences when you make you can use at so at is a similar adverb we use in present perfect but uh, what is the difference is uh, all these so far already just uh, just now all these are uh, used for positive sentences for negative yes sir veer raghav sir just completed actions okay just completed actions but remember always these actions are not just completed usually we use it like that but because sometimes recentness can be long it can also be long so that's why you should not i mean you can say just completed but you should know that always it need not be just completed sometimes they can be long ago one month ago six months ago also but still they can be recent that's why you should not say just completed so recentness there is no definition of recentness depending on the situation recentness can be sometimes 5 minutes sometimes 10 minutes sometimes 2 hours 1 hour sometimes 1 day sometimes 2 days 1 week 1 month also depending on the action right and uh, yes india has one independence uh, no 
India won independence. It's not uh, recent. You know, if you consider, yes, you know, uh, that's why I said recentness has to be defined by the user. What actually you mean? Okay, now negative sentences we use at, so hasn't finished yet. Or in the middle of the sentence you can say hasn't yet finished the work. So question, has she finished the work? Hasn't she finished her work? Why hasn't she finished the work? So, uh, you know, if you take a context, you will understand. How do you know an action is recent or not? Means it depends on when it started. For example, I am in the class. I am a teacher. You are my students. Let us say I am in the class and uh, I gave you some work. Right? I gave you some work uh, now. Let's say now I gave you some work, some group work and I went out to the staff room. So I come back after five minutes. I come back after five minutes. So I want to ask you whether you finish the work or not. I'll have two options. I'll have two options. I can ask you, did you finish the work? Then I'm asking you in simple past, which is fine, which is not a problem, which is fine. I can also ask you, have you finished the work? But which one would be more appropriate? Can somebody tell me? Have you finished the work? Have you finished the work? See, I mean, there's no difference. It's, there's no fixed rule which says uh, for this meaning only this tense. Yes, of course, it is fixed. But then we cannot be so rigid, especially when the meanings are similar. So in this kind of situation, most people ask, did you finish? Have you finished? Very few people whose grammar is good, whose language is good. Yes, those people will use it. So have you finished is better than did you finish? Why? Because you know when you have given that work. So if at all students have completed, they have completed it very, very like less than a minute or two minutes ago. So have you finished is the right question. So somebody should also answer it. Yes, we have finished. See, in real life conversations, your question and answers should be uniform in tenses. When somebody asks you a question in one tense, answer should be in the same tense. Unless there is a time difference. Unless there is a time difference, the tense should not change. For example, have you called him? You should not say, yes, I called him. This is a common mistake. Right? Uh, if you want yourself to be your communication to be good and perfect, have you yes, called? I have yes, called. yes, I, I have called. called. Or negative? No, I haven't. No, I, no, I haven't. haven't called. That's it. So this this is why this uh, uh, very common mistakes happen when uh, people use uh, past tense when people express past actions because when you want to talk about past actions you have two choices one is simple past one is present perfect. So which one you use depends on what is your meaning. If you are talking about a past action which is not related to the present, use simple past. If you are talking about a past action which is recently completed, then use present perfect. Right. So that is one uh, you know context for you to understand when can you use a present uh, perfect. See, somebody has entered the class. You are taking a class. So she has just come. She has just entered the class. Means not even a gap of one or two minutes. The bus has just left. The bus has just arrived. You see? The film has just uh, ended like this. Means just some time ago, whatever has uh, happened. Okay? And again, as I said, recentness can be a little long also. Long. For example, previous slide. You see the last example. Naina has been to Delhi recently. There, how much time do you think that recently means? How much time? For example, if Delhi has gone to, I mean, Nena has gone to Delhi today morning, today morning and today is evening. Can you say this sentence? Nena has been to Delhi recently. Can I say that? Maybe, today, with, maybe no, she sir. might have gone within month. Exactly. Here, the gap is a few days few days, it could be one month, it could be one year. Then how can you say that one year is recent? So it depends on the action, nature of action. That's why I said nobody should define recentness. Right? So 
So these are all. Say whenever you see just uh, just now already recently use for present perfect. That's how you can train your students, right? Because to be able to use uh, take such decisions, you need to negotiate with the meaning. Right? Not everybody will be able to do that. It will be difficult for students to do. This is for your understanding. So depending on the action, sometimes five minutes is recent. Sometimes a few days. Sometimes one month. For example, Delhi is a visiting place. We are all living in South India. How many times do we go to Delhi? Very rarely, right? For example, if I go, if I went to Delhi six months ago, when will my next Delhi visit be? I don't know. I may not go at all because visiting place. So once I go, I may not go at all. Such a far place. So compared to my next frequency, which I am not sure, which may take many years to go. Mm, compared to that frequency, one month ago or six months ago is not, uh, I mean, uh, late. It is very recent, right? So, you will say, no, I have been to Delhi recently, like that. So, it depends on you, the user. It depends sometimes on the action. For example, breakfast. Breakfast is something that you have daily. So, morning 9.30, if you meet somebody... You can ask two questions. Did you have your breakfast? Or you can ask, have you? What will you ask? Have you had? Have you had? Have you had? Have you, had, have you, had, have you, had. you can use two half forms. I have had. Answer should be, I have had. Have you had your breakfast? I've had. I've had. Oh, have you taken? I've had. Have you taken? Yeah. Have you had is appropriate rather than taken right okay so have you had so have you had your breakfast so which one is more appropriate have you had not did you have have you had but let us say evening five o'clock you want to ask somebody about their breakfast that day whether they had breakfast or not which one would be correct did you have your breakfast or have did you, you have had? did you have your breakfast did you have did you have your breakfast? Morning, if you are morning, if you are asking that question in the morning, which is close to breakfast time, then have you had your breakfast? Evening, 5 o'clock, if you are asking about a person's breakfast timing, you should ask, did you have your breakfast today? Did you have breakfast this morning? Not have you had. So a few hours of gap in this action, for this context, a few hours of gap is clearly distinct, uh, creating a, a difference between whether it is recent or not recent. But whereas in the Delhi case, six months ago also can be recent. Okay? And many teachers have this wrong notion. Wherever you have yesterday, last year, last month, last night, it is simple past. Wherever you have just, just now, already it is present perfect, which is a wrong notion. Even when you have yesterday, last year, last month, it can be present perfect not always simple past so how did uh, how do these uh, people why is this confusing means teachers themselves have developed sorry these to disturb you, sir. one minute sorry sir, sir. In sorry to interrupt you sir, some one grammar minute. books are very clearly no. noted that uh, there if any past indicator is there it should come into simple present simple grammar past books, sir. grammar books don't tell you that it is so teachers have developed this notion for convenience sake, for teaching convenience especially, so it is it is comfortable to say tell the students wherever you have yesterday, last year, last month, you know, these are simple past. Wherever you have just, just now. These equations have come out of convenience of teachers, not grammar books. If at all any grammar book is telling you that, that is wrong. Please understand this. Uh, grammar books depends on which grammar book you are using. First of all, it should be a standard grammar book, not written by some local authors. Okay? So, please check which grammar book is telling you that, what is your source of reference, and then uh, you cross-check, sir. Okay? So, yesterday, any past tense adverb can be used in simple past, at the same time, present, perfect. Right? So, it only you will know. The user should know or will know the meaning whether it is recent or not. This is for your understanding again. For, for From a teaching point of view, yes. Last year, last month, this is how most teachers teach because 
you know as i said negotiating with meaning it's a higher level concept where certain things it's difficult to convince your students or explain them these things students will understand as they grow but as an adult teacher for you you should know that um, last year last month as typical past tense adverbs whenever it is used they can be used in present perfect also see remember one thing present perfect is labeled as present perfect but that's also past action so there is no harm it's not about harm actually both are past as simple as that both are past only a short you know meaning difference line lies between them whether it is recent past or just past so how are you treating that action right that's why i said i have been to delhi instead of recently i can say i have been to delhi last month actually when you say recently you are not mentioning the time there what if somebody mentions i have been to delhi last month will it become wrong not exactly you are making the time specific so let us understand the meaning rather than grammar rules remember that these grammar rules so called grammar rules come from usage ultimately it is the usage so usage and meaning are higher above beyond rules so if we can so, understand these properly these kind of doubts should not occur to us so teachers yes. always negotiate with the meaning rather than a rule in a grammar book you should be able to think independently and interpret independently all right sir yeah yes sir sir can we say i had been to bangalore i had been to bangalore last month can we say like that no that is past perfect because you don't use past perfect for uh one single again see again the question the problem is can you say <laughs> you can say in spoken english that doesn't affect the meaning but if you are writing an exam that becomes a wrong statement because an examination always tests uh, what is standard isn't it so better when you are teaching students teach them what is standard usage uh, they will anyways learn from real life they will learn the usage so Uh, standard wise past perfect is not used for single action i had been to bangalore last month or last year just uh, use simple past there no need of past perfect because when there is a single past action you don't need uh, past perfect simple past is there no so simple past is enough yes so this is about present perfect i hope uh, it's clear right now there is one more slightly different function of present perfect which is also close to the present function but this is not related to time okay uh see for example you are asking somebody have you seen red fort now red fort is a visiting place here right red fort is a visiting place now a visiting place how many times do you go how many times do you go to a visiting place anybody rarely one or two yeah Maybe one or one once or twice once or twice sir once or twice once or twice usually once usually once, usually once. unless uh, the second uh, visit usually happens by chance by accident or somebody else is going so you want to go with them but you yourself will not go there because you've seen that place so if i ask this question to you most maybe some of you wouldn't have seen some of you would have seen it but among some of you who have seen it some of you might say one year ago some of you might say five years ago some of you might even say 10 years ago isn't it your time your time frames will be different so is it related to recentness here no sir no sir no, no. no sir so this this is a different action which is one time action so there are certain things in our life which we only do once normally under normal circumstances we are not talking about exceptional circumstances normally there are certain things which we do only once for example visiting place listen carefully visiting place Uh, going to a visiting place reading a novel or reading a book watching a film watching a film 
finishing your degree i mean getting doing a course etc etc so these kind of things which ha- happen rarely or only once uh, we we ask about that questions in uh, we express them in present perfect that's why you see have you seen red fort has she been to chennai before means that person is not from tamil nadu definitely this question you will not ask this question to somebody belonging to tamil nadu isn't it because that's their capital city definitely they will go there mm-hmm. so you are talking about somebody who is not from tamil nadu and more likely that person has not come to chennai before that's why have you been to delhi before have you seen chennai before have you come here before right have you finished your ma normally we do only once ma ba movie have you seen titanic movie you see like this and so any action which has very little occurrence means usually once you ask about it right so have you seen uh, bahubali movie have you seen bahubali have you mm, yes have you tasted uh, bisi bele bath i mean karnataka not from this question is not for people from karnataka they know so for the other states right so i can ask have you tasted uh, bisi bele bath that's a breakfast famous breakfast from karnataka right so i can ask people uh, who are not from kerala have you tasted puttu puttu is one of their breakfast items right so you see you see how these uh, actions are rare or limited for other people right the possibility is very very less so same way some actions these rare actions if they are very very rare these are normally rare for example have you finished your ma have you seen red fort normally rare sometimes action can be very very rare that time that time you had ever look at the last but one sentence have you ever traveled by a ship so the same action if it is very rare you make it more intense by adding ever right have you ever have you ever traveled by a ship this is a very rare action for all of us because all of us live in the mainland maybe some of you live in the coastal areas very few of you right have you ever climbed a mountain look at the last one right have we have you ever climbed a mountain so anything that is like likely you would have done once either you would have done it or you wouldn't have done it but if you would have done it you would have done it once right uh, even getting married also right so that's why the the appropriate way to ask somebody have you got married i mean you can also say did you get married what's the problem no problem but this is more appropriate because marriage also happens once i mean in reality some people want to get married again and again that is their wish but unfortunately the law law doesn't allow you so have you got married that's it instead of did you get married the other ways did you get married are you married fine but then have you got married is also one preferable structure right so hope you understood yes have you read uh, samskara by anand murthy that's a novel so when i am asking somebody have you read that one somebody might have read it one month ago somebody might have read it 10 years ago that doesn't matter here so this function if you see it's not about recentness it's not about recentness it's about doing a rare action at least once in life okay clear everybody shall i move on yes sir yes sir yes sir yes all right the next tense is past perfect past perfect so as i said the moment you think about perfect tense v3 Uh, our verb is v3 past uh, participle which is common for all perfect tenses but but this uh, time is past you see time is past so past we need a past have form which is represented by had 
So hat plus V3. The structure is quite simple. Structure is quite simple. Hat plus. Sorry. Hat plus V3. Actually in present perfect it's have plus V3. Because in past perfect it's past. Time is past. So time is represented by had. Had plus V3. Now this is also one of the most confusing tenses. First of all we don't use this tense much in real life. In real speech, in writing, formal writing is usually used a lot rather than spoken English. Now, where does this confusion happen is again, when you make a sentence like had plus V3, Rama had locked the house. It is clearly a past action, no doubt. Now, we already know two tenses which are past, which express past action. What are they? Number one, simple past. It's, it also talks about, I mean, it talks about past action. Present perfect. This is also past, but it is recent past. Now, this past perfect is also past. So, this is also a past action and this is a different tense. So, it should be different from the first two. That is simple past and present perfect. So, you, have to, you need to do a clear comparison to understand it better. So, what is the comparison is past perfect can never be used for single action. You should not use. Because if you want to use single action, don't use past perfect. Use simple past. There is already a past tense for past actions. So, when do you use a past perfect? It is used for a past action which happened before, before another past action. So, how do you know that it is, it is over before a past action? Because the other past action is also mentioned. So you are comparing two past actions. That's why in every past perfect sentence, two past actions will occur. Two past actions will come. Where you are comparing the first and second past action. So which one will have past perfect? The one that happened first, that will have past perfect. So look at this example. Rama had locked the house before she left to office. See how many past actions do we have here? Can you identify? Two sir. Two. Obviously two. Locking the house number one. Number two leaving to office number two. But which one happened first? Locking the house. Locking. How do you know by the presence of past perfect? Because you see locking only has had. Left doesn't have had. This is simple past. So this itself is a proof, indication that past perfect, wherever it is there, that happened first, happened first, that action happened first or before the other past action. So both are over, both are over, no doubt, both are over, finished. But which one happened first? Locking the house. So that will take the past perfect. Okay. So India had got independence in 1948. So where is the second action, sir? Chinna Rao, sir? Where is the second action? You are listening, but you are using usage is wrong. Where before, are two before, actions? Huh? Before, 19, before 1948, sir. Before 1948, but where are two actions? India got is, freedom. Is, is your before, is your before representing time or before representing an event there? Before 1948 is just a time. There is no other action there. India got independence before 1948. That's yeah. enough. Yeah. So, India got independence is enough because here you are representing that word before is just used for time. There is no second past action there. It is just like before 6 o'clock, before 7 o'clock, before morning. According to your logic, we have to say, I had, I had had my breakfast before 6 o'clock because the word before has come. No, wrong. It is not about before. It is whether two past actions are there or not. Right? Please pay attention to yes. Now, in the second sentence, if you see, same sentence is not same sentence, slightly different. She switched on the TV after she had finished her work. Now, here if you see, the past perfect is in the second half of the sentence. First action is switched on. Second action is finished her work. Now, here you are using in the second half. Why? Because you are using the linker, 
we are using the linker after here now before and after usually are used in past perfect because you are comparing two past actions at different times but both of them are opposite in meaning so before and after are opposite in meaning every past and past perfect can be expressed using both but remember the order of the events will change so if i have to say the first sentence using after many people get confused here many teachers have confusion here rama had locked the house before she left to office if the same sentence i have to use expressing after can somebody tell me can somebody tell the same sentence using after reframe for me or right rama left to office after uh, had locked the house yes correct that's right rama left to office after she after. had after yeah. she had locked the locked house. house many people get confused here what they do is they change had to left rama had left to office after she locked down no you cannot change the meaning meaning has to remain the same past perfect remains the same for the same action okay so to avoid this confusion i am going to give you a simple technique to remember easily remember when you use before and after without using without getting confused how to remember where to use uh, past perfect okay so remember when you are using before in your sentence before past perfect comes before before if you are using after in your past perfect past perfect comes after after simple before before after after you can check you can check two sentences are in front of you rama had locked the house here you have before and where is past perfect coming before the word before isn't it similarly second sentence you have after again you see notice she had finished where is it coming after the word after, after. so before 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 after after you can remember it like this easily sometimes we use when also like third sentence the train had already left when we reached the station actually it means before we reached the station only the train had left but when we went there it was not there it it had already left that's what it means all right so yeah this is the tense where you can have two had two hads this is the only tense where you can have two hads had and had uh, side by side so that should not confuse us please understand first had is auxiliary had second had is v3 it is the v3 of the action eating drinking or taking right for example in past perfect you can say i had had my breakfast i had had my breakfast in the sense first had is auxiliary second had is uh, action you know v3 of eat so i had had my breakfast before i had some milk something like that right or before i went out something like that so can you give me some example sentences type in the chat box your own examples of past perfect so that i know there's no confusion right because many teachers themselves make mistake in this particular tense it's not about following the structure but it should also be meaningful in real life can you please type your example sentences in the chat box when i reach the railway station the train left sir that is my example sir jiji joseph that is my example which is clearly on the slide yeah. i have asked you to create your own example you are copying my examples the verb should be different the detail should be different okay subject should be different right we attended our class after we have finished uh, 
one minute i'll just look at our class after we had finished our lunch okay good we had finished our lunch before my mother came home good the plane had left uh, by the time i got to the airport correct i had fallen down when i climbed the stairs badra sir that's not a very good example for past perfect because uh, you said when means that's a parallel action while you were doing that something else happened but this uh, past perfect is about one past action happening before another before or after not when or while okay so that context is not quite suitable i thought i had sent the money a week ago i thought yes i thought i had sent the money a week ago because you know you had used uh, you have used another past tense verb there fine correct swarnalata i had taken my packet before i went to house ravi had come sir krishna rao sir ravi had come v3 v3 came is v2 okay ravi had come to school after the bell rang okay suman sir had left the office shekhar sir but where is the second past action where are you comparing if there is no comparison don't don't use past perfect simple past is enough suman sir left to office that's enough so that becomes a wrong sentence i had completed my ma before i reached 30 correct i had finished my work before i went to bed madhu had entered the class before he was permitted okay when i went to home my children had slept correct the game had already started before we reached correct students gone to play students gone to play after they had finished students went to play sir samson sir your past perfect is correct but what did you do with your simple past you have used a v3 there students gone there is no need of v3 that simple past students went yeah. okay sir okay okay thank you the bell had rung before i entered the class they had gone to mumbai before we reached bangalore we did homework after we had finished the class correct you left for shopping before i reached your sri veer sir veer ragava sir where is past perfect in your sentence both your actions are past tense no there is no past perfect past perfect now unmuted Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I wished I had. Okay, Suri Prakash sir, I wished I had taught. This is not. <laughs> yeah, this is not a past perfect. Actually, it looks like the structure, but then it is not past perfect. This is just a wish. Okay. Yeah, that's how we express it. It looks like that, but it is not actually a past perfect action. Because past perfect is already something that is already over, but here you are expressing your wish. so you have to be careful structure may look like a particular tense but meaning wise just like present continuous is sometimes used for planned the future actions no like that tomorrow we are going to delhi if you see this as such structure present continuous but is it going on now no it is a future action like that when i had seen when i had seen a snake i ran off okay we had played volleyball before my friend came her children had drunk the water before they had lunch mamata mamata madam before they have lunch how can you use present tense both should be in past tense have lunch correct your sentence it must be had lunch sir it must be had lunch had lunch that's right no i wanted her to correct herself because yes we are talking about student centered uh, classes no not teacher centered <laughs> so the teacher shouldn't do the direct correction students teacher should give an opportunity for the student okay, to sir. self correct right correction doing correction is easy when you know something but then it should always be eliciting eliciting which indicates a teacher student centered class all right i woke up after my wife had her <laughs> okay anup sir you woke up late that is why your wife left you 
breakfast without. So that is your your mistake. I was just joking, sir. I know, but I am interpreting that for you. Was, okay, thank you, sir. It had rained when we went out. Okay, wrong sentence, Jaya Madam. It wrong sentence. It had rained when we went out. First you went out, then it it was raining. No, so somewhere there is confusion. I as I said, first action should happen, and then this should happen. So, which one happened first? That that should take. Yeah, Surya Prakash sir, as I said. When you use two hats, first hat is auxiliary. Like all in the, in the all these sentences, we say I had locked, I had switched off, I had gone, I had left. So had is auxiliary. First hat is common, right? Auxiliary. Second hat is main verb. See, have has different meanings. No, have can be used for eating, drinking. So for eating, drinking, third form. See, go, went, gone. Gone is the third form. Similarly, when you use have for eating, for example, every morning I have idli as breakfast. Present tense. Have is equal to eating. Yesterday I had chapati. Past tense. What is the V3 of uh, had? It is again had, right? So when had, had comes, first had is auxiliary, second had is past participle of eating or drinking i had had coffee i had had idli i had had my breakfast before i had some milk like this consuming okay yes v3 had is v3 had is v3 in english many verbs v2 and v3 are same no right for example walked walk is present tense Walked is past tense. What is the V3 of walked? Again, V3 walked, no? Same way, had, had. Have is present tense. Had is past tense. V3 also? Yes. Sir, we use had only for the part of con uh, consumable things, sir? Or yes. Any other con thing? Only consuming. I mean, taking also. Taking sometimes is not consume. consume. For example, taking bath. Okay, okay. So, eat, had basically is equal to three main verbs, three actions. Eating, drinking, taking. Eating, drinking, taking. For example, I had milk, drink. I had idli, food. I had my bath, taking. Okay, right? okay. Like okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. I got that point. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome. Children came out of the class before the bell had rung. Arundhati madam, there is a confusion in your idea. You used past perfect wrongly. Look at your sentence again. Which one happened first? Children coming out first or bell ringing first? Um, bell, bell sir. No, you are meaning, bell. You, are, you are saying something but your sentence means something else. That's why it's important to think clearly. Children came Sir. out from the class before the bell rang. If the bell rang first, okay. how can the children come out? Okay, okay, sir. Meaning it's very important to think clearly. So according to the sentence okay. that you typed, it should be children had come out. Children had come okay, out sir. from the class before the bell rang. That's it. future perfect. We'll go to the next uh, tense. So, future perfect, again, as I said, perfect means V3. Yes, V3. Past participle, that is. And uh, wherever there is a V3, a half form is there. Now, this is future, not past. So, have. We use the have. Basic form have is used. And will or shall. Because it's future, will or shall is used. For all future tenses, will or shall is compulsory. Right. So, will or shall plus have plus V3. Look at the example. We will have finished. We will have finished the project. I will have reached there. Now here, these two words are important. Prepositions by and prepositions within are important. Just like in the previous case, before and after, these prepositions were important. Same way, here, by 
and within these two are very very important time time words expressions of time now before this we should understand the meaning we will have finished the project by next week means what is your uh, final time next week before that we should finish so in english we call this as deadline future perfect means what should come to your mind is deadline this tense is used to express deadline now all of us know what a deadline means right do we know or not because all of us have deadlines no we all work with deadlines yes or no all of you understand no understand no? yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yeah so deadline means any future point of time before which you should complete an action okay so see this this people are saying we will have finished the project by next week so here next week indicates a particular week a particular time specific the time is specific means among so many weeks you are saying next week which is a particular week so when the time is particular we use by for deadlines so deadlines are expressed using these two words number 1 by number 2 within by is for specific point of time because next week next month next year by thursday by 6 o'clock by morning by tomorrow night these are all specific times so specific time the deadline you are expressing specific time by or you are using you are expressing the deadline using as a period of time 1 hour 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours 5 hours 1 day 2 day 3 day 1 week 2 week 3 week 1 month 2 month 3 months 1 year 2 year 3 years these are all durations deadline is expressed as duration then we use within in short many people use this as in rather than within they say in in one hour in two hours in one month actually in there is a reduced form of within okay so this is how we express deadlines now in real life most people do not use this tense even when they are expressing deadline they do not use why because as i said whatever is complex whatever is you know i mean not easy for people people don't use that or maybe nobody has taught them <laughs> nobody has taught them properly or they don't understand so in real life many people what they do is if they don't know how to use this tense whenever they express deadline they use simple future instead of future perfect so they they carry this by and within from future perfect and they mix it up with simple future that's why most of us do not come across these uh, sentences from people even when they are expressing deadline so most people will say we will finish the project by next week look at the sentence carefully we will finish the project simple future we will finish by next week so by next week is you are borrowing from you are mixing up but basic tense is simple future only so that's why many people manage uh, this meaning like that that's why we don't come across actual future perfect okay now i want you to frame sentences talk about any future deadline that you have preferably talk about real deadlines real deadlines not some artificial sentence about some subject preferably your own self sir we yes, will sir. have completed esl training online training by 13th of december okay you will have finished online cld good you will have finished online cld by 30th december 31st december okay jansi madam go ahead sir uh, when we when when do we use shall sir as i said shall is used for i and we i mean that is standard okay standard but in spoken english most of us use will 
like only when you are filling a grammar test taking a grammar test or doing a writing an exam let us say because both of them express futurity you should not bother in spoken english as long as informal communication it should not bother exam writing yes we should use only shall we will have finished homework by next week okay mm, sir don't don't think about a realistic sentence i used next week so you don't use next week badigar sir nobody will finish homework next week homework is daily action okay so be realistic in your example sentences that's why i said say something about yourself preferably you know yeah i will finished krishna rao sir i will finished all i will have finished your verb is missing next we will have finished our online course by this time we will have finished our class 10 syllabus by january very good good example i shall have presented my lp by end of years uh, okay i'll have completed 12 years of service that's how you have to say i will have completed my service 12 years that's a wrong combination next i'll have completed my portions by january 31st okay i shall have completed shiv prasad naidu sir your sentence is incomplete i shall have completed what your sentence example is incomplete we will have submitted assignments uh, by 8th january i will have finished dr hitesh sanmet 7th january okay that's right so we will have finished our academic year by the end of april correct right so shall we go to the next tense yes we have finished looking at all the perfect tenses present perfect past perfect future perfect by next yes, year sir. we will have finished our presentation by tomorrow sessions okay by tomorrow right all right okay sir we will go to the next okay okay last the last tense this is the last tense we are not going to look at the last two me last ideally basic tense wise this is the last tense perfect continuous perfect continuous again you have three versions present perfect continuous past perfect continuous and future perfect continuous but the last two we are not going to look at because you don't have to teach them nobody uses them you will never come across that not even a newspaper not in a novel because they are complex they are long and then it's difficult for people to apply them consciously so nobody uses them so we also won't discuss but the first one is important present continuous perfect continuous is the fourth tense among basic tenses now when you add time present past future again you get three variants no out of that present perfect continuous now if you notice this fourth tense is basically a combination of second and third isn't it Se among basic tenses second is continuous third is perfect so perfect plus continuous now let us look at the verb form continuous is there so ing form is there yes it is there next perfect is there so perfect what is the verb form v3 so is there a v3 here yes what is the v3 it is fixed been it is fixed v3 here is fixed so been is the v3 form okay now whenever there is a v3 as i told you whenever there is a v3 we have to use have form right we cannot use v3 in isolation isn't it so have or has present no not past so present has have plus been plus v1 plus ing form so look at the example reena singular so has has been been read plus ing reading has been reading has been talking has been chatting has been sleeping see now here again two prepositions are important for and since for and since 
for e is for period of time period of time e is for point of time sir now you should get a doubt sir in future perfect also you said uh, point of time period of time so you have to compare that with this you should not confuse sir you said future perfect by is point of time within is a period of time correct but that was for deadline deadlines can be expressed in two ways using point of time using period of time similarly here it is not deadline here first you should know the function of this tense a perfect continuous tense i am not talking about present remember i am talking about the basic tense present i mean perfect continuous perfect continuous tense indicates duration remember duration what do you mean by duration time duration how long so how long an action has been going on so in english duration is expressed using these two words for and since for period of time since point of time so when an duration is expressed using point of time use since when duration is expressed period of time use for so look at the first sentence 2 hours 2 hours is a period of time no so for 2 hours 2 days period of time 5 minutes period of time for 5 minutes for 2 days for 1 week for 1 month for 15 days for 3 years all these are periods of time or you see the uh, second sentence reena has been reading since 9 am means since means 9 am is a particular time so since 9 o'clock means starting point when did it start since 9 o'clock even now it's going on so i have been teaching for 10 years good correct sir shaker sir correct sentence uh, adam shafi your sentence is wrong i have been working in school since 10 years 10 years is point of time or period of time first you should understand this difference clearly what is point of time period, what is period of time sir period of time so not period since, of time yes. so far far for i have far. to use far yes correct monday tuesday first week second week january february all these are particular specific because you are naming them six six is the name of a number monday name of a day january name of a month like this 1920 1957 name of an year as long as you are being specific about the time use since otherwise for time period you have been teaching us since 3 pm that's correct sir that's correct 